When you think of firefighters, who do you picture? Burly white male, perhaps? Hot, sexy Mr. November on the firefighter's calendar? <laughs> well, considering that 95% of all urban firefighters in Australia are white men, it's not surprising. And whilst I have the utmost respect for all the men in our fire service, this image that we have in our heads, it needs to change. You see, a homogenous workforce and this outdated calendar stereotype are no longer relevant in the modern fire service and they actually limit our capabilities. Today, I want to tell you why your fire and rescue service needs to have a mix of firefighters because of the range of activities that we're required to do to keep you safe. Historically, firefighters only went to fires. That was it. The work was hot, heavy, and dangerous. Like this ferocious fire here at the Goldsboro Mort wool store, formerly just across the road from where we sit today. In 1935, it burned for days and threatened to take all of Sydney with it. The job's changed a lot since then. Buildings have fire protection systems, we know more about preventing fires, and we do more medical and rescue work than ever before. So what do we really do? Of course, we still put fires out, but we do so much more. For example, at a recent car accident I attended in Bathurst, I had to crawl through the side window of a crushed and overturned car to help rescue a severely injured man. His teenage daughter had crashed and rolled the car on that day while she was learning to drive. Our most senior firefighter, who incidentally looks like Mr. November, was too big to fit through the side window. So myself and my two other crew members used specialized rescue techniques to release the man and slide him out through the front windscreen to safety. As a woman and as the officer in charge that day, it was both appropriate and acceptable for me to hug that distressed teenage driver and reassure her that her dad was gonna be okay. And in another job, an old man fell out of his bed and laid for two days on the floor with a broken hip until his family could investigate. When we arrived, we sent our smallest firefighter down through the roof cavity. She then reassured the old man in Italian and was able to translate between his family and the ambulance crew. This old man was saved that day because of this firefighter's small size and her cultural competence. <laughs> and in a bizarre job just recently, a junior firefighter had to hold and stabilize a man's inflamed penis <laughs> while another firefighter used pressurized cutting tools with absolute surgical precision to remove multiple stainless steel rings. I know it sounds odd, but it's all part of our job. In actual fact, responding to fires and other emergencies such as this accounts for only 7% of the work we do. The other 93% is spent saving lives in prevention, preparedness, and working alongside other emergency services. In order to be effective in all of these situations, we must work in teams. Our fire trucks are like giant red toolboxes where we select the right combination of tools, skills, knowledge, and experience to solve problems. But just how versatile can our teams be when less than 5% of our firefighters are women and less than 2% are from ethnically diverse backgrounds? And it would appear that the whole world has the same problem. A couple of years ago, I had the absolute privilege to travel all around the world on a Winston Churchill Fellowship to research what best practice in the fire service looked like. I traveled to Japan, 
India, England and North America visiting all their fire and rescue services. I discovered that recruitment strategies such as quotas and girls' fire camps were making significant difference and that best practice focused on preventing emergencies and building community resilience. In Australia, fire and emergency services are recognising the need to remain relevant in our rapidly changing world. We are actively recruiting a diverse workforce and we're making sure that you all know who we are and the range of things that we do. We have increased the numbers of women, indigenous and ethnically diverse pe people in all of our emergency services. Not only has this made us more versatile and broadened our capabilities, it's also really made a significant impact on the culture in our fire stations and our other workplaces. Slowly, the message is spreading that we are rescuers, protectors and educators. We participate in your cultural, sporting, religious and events and in time, you can expect us to look even more like you. Change is slow, but we're definitely heading in the right direction. And the best thing is that you can help too. Stop thinking tall, sexy Mr. November is your local firefighter and start thinking captain capability, fit, intellectually and emotionally strong, multi-skilled and connected to you. So the next time you see a giant red toolbox go flying past, imagine a crew of men and women inside that reflect your community with the range of skill sets to solve all problems and guarantee your safety. Thank you.